Do you consider yourself an artist? Oh, wow. Um, do I consider myself an artist? I would say yes in the sense that uh, I try to do something creative every day. And I try to live what I would describe as a creative life. I drove to your place here in my car. And most people that buy a car, they just, okay, they get their car and that's it. I, I, I have no allegiance to Toyota and I turn my car into a Batmobile where I have Batman stickers in certain places on the hubcaps, on all the interior in the console. I covered up the Toyota logo with a Batman logo. Um, and so I try to like, um, and if you ever come to my place, everything from the bookshelves is just something creatively stimulating everywhere. I always have some creative project I'm doing, whether I'm modifying something. Um, and then even with my website and film projects, there's sort of a handmade feel to it. So I guess artists would be an all encompassing thing um, in that describes the way I live my life. Also the way, uh, I like to write. I don't, I just like to like, if everyone's doing this thing, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go the other way or find another way. Or we've heard this line a million times, I'm gonna try something different. So um, I, I would say that like artists would be a, a good all encompassing thing, but I would never say that about myself. Um, but I but I think and, and live that way because I, I, I tend to not accept the choices we're given and by that, I mean, one of the things um, when I was in high school, uh, they try to see what your capacity is for certain careers, right? And one of the questions that puzzled um, a teacher of mine was, why did you put that hours of work don't mean it matter to you? Don't you want to work a nine to five job? And I said, no, um, I don't. The hours don't matter. And so I look at the choices we're presented in terms of how it's possible to live your life, and I try to do something different. And maybe that's uh, sort of a bit of the Gen X rebel in me, but also um, something of, I just can't do, I can't accept a thing as like, this is the only option, right? Which is why I altered my car to not look like anybody's car. And I will say this, um, whenever I do have the luxury of valet parking my car, the valet parkers love it. And I always just say, get my Batmobile. Um, so, so there you go. Would you consider yourself a businessman? I, I definitely would consider myself a business person from this standpoint. The most successful artists that you know about, that you have awareness of, whether it be Steven Spielberg as a filmmaker or other filmmakers, even Soderbergh, and this is the challenge of working in film, is that you have to be wildly creative on the one hand. And that describes a lot of people. But the ones that succeed, the, one, the ones that work consistently, have an output of work, are the ones that are very good at business. And so that is, I think, the biggest challenge facing filmmakers is to balance the artist side, which a lot of times conflicts with being a business person. Because what I learned about being, about being successful in business is it's all about, um, uh, deconstructing and, and doing doing kind of a little autopsy on your process and then coming up with the successful parts of the process and then repeating it. For example, having written a couple of books, nonfiction, in the nonfiction realm, I would always have friends ask, well, how did you write a book? And I said, I didn't write a book. I wrote a thousand words a day. And I did that every day. And I did it five days a week because I got up at 5 a.m. and I worked till 8 a.m. When I was spent, I had about 1,000 words. On a good day, 3,000 words. On a bad day, maybe 500 words. But I did that every day, five days a week, never not, for months. And within 60, 70 days, I had enough words for a book. The average book is 60 to 70,000 words. So what you don't know is before that, I spent six months on an outline for that book. So what I began to learn, um, and just through many sort of business wonky books that I have read, I tend to sort of glean, there's always like a read a book like The 4-Hour Workweek or uh, The 7 Habits of Highly Successful People. And I usually get like one or two nuggets of like, oh, that's really good. But you gotta like sift through that 60,000 words to get to that like, that, you know, uh, uh, pot of gold of, of, 
um, uh, knowledge. But I began to realize that part of this is about, is about breaking down processes. No one writes a book or just makes a movie or writes a screenplay. It's breaking that process down into the smallest, smallest task and then just doing that task every day, like anything, and creating a habit. And I think that scientifically speaking, um, they say that it takes about three weeks to instill a habit. And I think that if you can develop those good habits and just do a piece, even if it's a paragraph, you're gonna have, I mean, it boggles my mind when I see people who do these long Facebook posts or social media, social media posts. And I look at that and I said, if you took that energy and you put it into like a book or a screenplay or some other piece of work and you just, you would really have something. I feel, I feel like we're, we're giving away our creativity to these social media companies and it, it, I, 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 it's, it's, it's really disheartening to see a generation waste their time with these long-winded posts when you could actually have, have created a, a, a work, or some cohesive work. Um, but back to the book thing, I, I, do, I do like tend to spend about six months coming up with an outline, a very detailed outline, usually about between 15 and 30 pages. And then that outline, I, I detail, usually it's like, here's the chapter heading, here are the subheads, and here's a sentence about, that will describe the next 500 words I'm gonna write. And I've literally written the book in my head. So then it's a matter of just going back and then doing that daily routine of getting up very early in the morning, kind of when you're in that lucid state, this is pre-coffee, pre-caffeine, so you're, so you're not quite all there and you're in almost a trance-like state and a lot of writers will talk about that. You're just sort of your, um, what they call in the zone. You get, it's, it's easier to get in the zone when you're, you know, fresh out of bed pre-caffeine. And that was always, that was a process that worked for me. Other people, it works differently. I feel like you have to kind of know yourself to know what, works for you. Other people, late night, that's their most productivity. For me, it's mornings. So I think getting to know how you function as a creative machine is extremely helpful. And then coming up with a series of repeatable processes um, where you're successful. And then feedback also to any artist is like air. I mean, you need it to live. You need feedback, um, both positive and critical. To, to grow. Uh, I'm always very skeptical when someone compliments me. I don't take a compliment very well. So, um, uh, but I will take a note, a really specific note seriously so that it can be, so it's an addressable note, whether it's, um, uh, I don't know, a film project or whether it's a, a book project. Um, notes, notes are, uh, and I feel like I give good notes too. I think if you, I think you, you you have to learn to give good notes as well as like take those notes um, in as part of that process. Did you know living a creative life meant not living a nine to five life? One hundred percent, I was well aware that living a creative life would not mean nine to five. I mean, I, I can just I can even tell you when I'm out like socially and having fun, I'm still working. There's a part of my brain that is always kind of. Um, I'm never not without a, a, a notepad, um, and I tend to like like to physically write like a notepad, and I've always carried in my pocket, um, God, for um, probably almost thirty years. I always carry a space pen. Um, <laughs> this is the uh, this is the space pen that was developed by NASA. Uh, they spent ten million dollars to create a technology which. Um, seals the ink so that it forces it out, right? And the Russians used a pencil, but we Americans invented this pen. They're about 25 bucks. Uh, the ink lasts maybe four to five years. I've always got a backup when this one runs out. It's never not with me. So napkins, if I don't have a notepad or a tiny notepad, I love those little tiny notepads. Um, and I will, if it's an emergency, write notes in my phone. I mean, I don't like to do that, um, but I prefer the heart. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of always working or always like, or something will spark something. And I do think that 
That's why that early morning work, like once I'm sort of spent, my brain is still working on a problem, how to solve a creative problem. Still working, still working, still working. I just don't have the solution. And sometimes taking a step away is the best, best way to, for your brain to continue that work subconsciously. And I found that that, that works for me as part of the pre creative process. Also, I love to be stimulated by um, uh, like, I don't know, um, dive bars are fun. Um, that may not work for everybody. Uh, the horse races are fun. Um, I like to just go somewhere where there's a lot of life being lived and, and observe. And, and um, I, I find that uh, that is also very stimulating to the, to the creative process. Would you consider yourself a contrarian? Ooh, yeah, I'm I'm 100% a contrarian. I mean, I can just tell um, when I look at old photos of myself, I was almost never on point with whatever the fashion of the day was. If this was the fashion of the day, I was over here. You know what I mean? Like I can't, and even when it comes to thinking about things, you know, like the films, even that Film Thread had championed at the time, weren't the ones that ever became big hits. I mean, we covered, People like Quentin Tarantino earlier in their career or Richard Linklater uh, in the 90s when Film Threat was a print magazine. And just to explain to some, some of the people out there that may not know what a print magazine is, print magazine is just like the internet, but it's, but it's a, a printed on really thin slices of wood. And magazines were sold at things called bookstores. And you go to a bookstore, you get a magazine. I'm going to, we're joking. I'm joking, of course. It's, <laughs> you guys know what magazines are. Books, come on. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I mean, I was a magazine, I was effectively a media junkie. And I, at one point, was subscribing to 50 magazines that I would get every month. And they all across the gamut, artist magazines, stuff about comic books, pop culture, science fiction, um, the business of publishing, Folio being one, um, uh, Newsweek. I mean, I was a media junkie. Um, now, it's easy to be a media junkie with, you know, access to everything online. Um, but back in the 80s and 90s, that was, that was not as easy a thing. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely a contrarian in, in, in the sense that I look at like, and this has always been a problem for me whenever I have worked for a traditional company. Because I do like to look at processes. like And like, this is how Film Threat, if you look at my website and our, you know, what we do on our YouTube channel and whatnot, some might think, oh, this is this big organization of a lot of people. And it is, it represents about 30 writers located all over the world. Um, but we just have a process for how we do things that leads to um, being able to put out and cover so many films that don't get coverage in your traditional um, mainstream media. And that's just from looking at processes. When I've worked for traditional companies, what usually tends to happen is I look at how they're doing something and I think, oh, I know how I would do that better and that would save me hours. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, I wrote a book years ago called The Ultimate Film Festival Survival Guide. And um, in the process of writing that book, I created a database of film festivals. And I would time myself how long it took to compile this data. And I used a very simple, at the time, spreadsheet program. And I would type in the data. And it, it took a while. It took like 15, 20 minutes for each festival. Well, I was trying to collect data on 2,000 film festivals located all over the world. So I talked to an intern of mine at the time. And I, and I, and I said to him, I said, hey, what do you think if I gave away a PS3? and maybe bought some pizza and drinks for some college students. So we got about 60 college students together. I bought them pizza and drinks. I got them all in front of their computers, logged into a database, and I calculated in my head with the number of students, how long it takes, it's gonna take us three to four hours, blah, 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 like, and I will have all the data. So they had a name of a film festival, they went and they found the website, and then they just put in all the data points. And at the end, we did a drawing and somebody won a PS3. And I had all the data for my book, and it happened in just an evening. So again, that was just sort of a, a way of looking at what is, the, what is the end goal, how can I get there, and then what is, what is a way to do it where everybody gets something out of it? And I kind of feel like in a lot of ways in my career, I've Tom Sawyered myself into, you know, the Tom Sawyer story where he's painting the white picket fence 
and then he enlists the aid of everyone to help him paint the fence. So he's, you know, um, I'm not saying I'm also not there painting the fence, but that is how I've been able to do a lot of what I'm doing is taking a look at like, this is how you would do this in the real world is you would hire a company to collect that data for you and they would charge you between 20 and $30,000. Or I could buy a PS3, some pizza and drinks, we can have a good fun night and, and, and I, get, I, I collect that data. So I always look at like, how can I be competitive and how can I do something? And I think a lot of it is um, there's, with my organization, there's just very few layers of approval. I mean, it's a very small group of people. So there's not a lot of hand wringing over decision making. You know, it's like cut to the chase. What's our end goal? Let's let's come up with that process and boom. So we can we get something done. We can be very efficient, whether it's an award show we're doing or some, uh, some documentary project. Um, and this is gonna sound weird, but I will like, um, even for, uh, we did this award show called Award This, um, which is my part of our mission, sort of completes our mission with Film Threat where we're championing smaller indie movies that get no love at award season, zero. Um, these are movies that are small, that don't get love from say the, even the Independent Spirit Awards. And I wanted to create an event that um, really was diverse in the sense that you know, we were awarding every, giving acknowledgement to films on the spectrum, everything from like Coded Bias um, by Shalini Kantaya, whose movie played Sundance, and then a movie called Corona Zombies, directed by Charlie Band from Full Moon Entertainment, which is a schlock exploitation zombie movie. So <laughs> we did that and we, um, we even had gift bags for the event and I just timed how long it takes to stuff a gift bag and then I knew that if we had this many people, we'd do it in this amount of time. This sounds kind of like, in a way like, because um, now I can hear myself saying this, I sound like a crazy person, but- if, You're if a Virgo you could, though, right? Yes, how, so, did you, how did you guess that? Oh, it says it on your IMDb. Or oh, it, it does? just says your September oh. 5th or whatever. Oh, I'm a, yes, yes I'm, <laughs> and if you see, um, yes, I, I am all, all the, aspects of Virgo that you would say, like, you know, neatnik, perfectionist, all that, like, yes, that's me, yes. But I, but I try to come up with, I don't try to not like burden anyone else, anyone else with my, uh, with, with those aspects of my personality. So I try to make it a, a, a gift, um, at least within our organization, right? Like this is, this is the thing that I'm good at. I'm not good at what other members of my team are good at and, and collectively, um, you know, we're able to do what we do. Uh, but yes, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I, I fit into all, all of those aspects um, and, uh, and try to approach everything with some sort of precision. But I've learned that timing out tasks just tells you how long something is gonna take. I mean, I would, I would even say to anyone pursuing writing, um, the thing that I always look at is how long did it take? And I do a word count, you know, no matter what program I'm using, um, I just do a word count or a page count. And what did I produce? How much time? Is it repeatable? And where do I have to get? How do I have to get in the zone? What are the circumstances? What is the time of day? I don't like to work when leaf, the leaf blowers are around. Distractions. I'm very prone to distraction. So, um, yeah, so, so, uh, I find that it's useful to break things down into a process and to know yourself.